let's talk about saving money at the grocery store. How much should you be spending on groceries? How can you reduce food waste? What do you do about picky toddlers? Today, I'm going to be answering all of your grocery questions, and there are a ton of them. So grab yourself a cup of iced hot coffee, whatever. I don't care what's in your cup. Let's just dive in. I put out a call for questions on Instagram on Monday saying, hey, I'm going to talk about saving money on groceries. Let me know what questions you have thinking. I'll just have a few and can do a couple Insta stories. And then I had, I don't even know how many hundreds of questions. And so I'm just going to sit down today and answer through as many of them as I possibly can and hopefully help you guys save money. I know that groceries, saving money on groceries, feeding your family, it's a big deal but it can quickly spiral out of control and you can end up spending way more money than you intended to. And then there's always the question of well, what should I be spending? What's a good amount? What's too much? And really those are very personal numbers, right? What we feed our family is very personal, but let's talk about how we can not go crazy. Okay. How much do you personally spend on groceries? I did a whole video on this and you can Head up there and watch it if you want. So the short answer is $100 per person per month. We have six people in our family, so that would be $600 a month. And even though one of those people is very tiny and I'm still nursing, but she does get some solids. And when I say $100 per person per month, that includes everything except diapers. So food, toilet paper, toiletries, cleaning supplies, all of it, except diapers. I ordered those off Amazon. No, I don't cloth diaper. I did for two years and hated every second of it. How can you cut costs if you have to buy specific foods due to food allergies? Dairy-free, gluten-free, soy-free. Okay, so actually we are soy-free, or we try to be as close to soy-free as possible. One of my sons also is allergic to Lake 40 and Lake 5, which are red food dyes. And then he also has some sensory issues and we have experimented to see if removing gluten and casein helps him. There's very few peer reviewed studies on these things. So it's a little frustrating, but I have seen some anecdotal evidence in my own life that cutting out the gluten works for him. So I can't diagnose your child, I'm not a doctor or a dietitian. But we just focus on whole real foods. So one of the things that actually ends up costing a lot of money when you are food restricted due to allergies is trying to replace traditional foods like whole wheat bread with gluten-free bread. These come in a markup. Our advice has just been to cut them out. So instead of my son getting a peanut butter sandwich, he gets peanut butter on apples or peanut butter on a corn tortilla or something else that's similar but not a replacement item. So we have found that just cutting those items out completely saves us money rather than trying to find an alternative. Plus peanut butter and apples is way more exciting. Also, also focusing instead on the foods that you can have instead of being like, oh, we can't eat this, this, and this because it causes this problem. We instead focus on, okay, I know that I can't make certain dishes for him, but there are foods that he enjoys that are relatively inexpensive and incorporate more of those into our meals. Instead, you can't change it, so you just roll with it. When to decide to buy in bulk. Okay, I got a lot of questions on buying in bulk. Does bulk save you money? Should I join a shopping club? What are some staples I should buy in bulk? And I actually do have a few tips for this. When it comes to joining a shopping club like Sam's, Costco, or BJ's, you have to decide if the cost up front is worth the savings. And when my kids were little, they still are little, but when I only had two young children, it just wasn't worth it to us to have a Sam's membership. Now that we're involved in more activities and we have more children and maybe we need more diapers, we have found the benefit in having a Sam's membership and buying some things in bulk has saved us some money. It's worth it to us, but you have to factor in that you pay 
a cost to be in this club. And so that needs to be factored into whatever savings you have. You have to take your savings and subtract whatever you paid up front first. As far as buying in bulk, it only saves you money if you use up the item before it expires. Like toiletries, toilet paper, paper towels, shampoo, toothpaste, body wash, diapers, laundry detergent, dish detergent, those sorts of things. Does not do you any favors to buy bulk peanut butter, stick it in the cabinet, forget it's there, and not use it in time that actually ends up costing you money because you've thrown it away. So things that you know you're going to use on a revolving basis, yes, buying them in bulk will save you, but be smart about it. Don't buy things in bulk just because, oh, I'm saving money. And again, I did a video on the best items to buy at Costco and Sam's that will actually save you money. So if you want to know what you can buy that is a good value, head over there. But items shouldn't be frozen. Okay, so here's a tip for you. Next time you're at the supermarket, walk down the frozen food aisle and see what they've frozen. Because if they can freeze it in the store, you can freeze it at home. There are some things that don't obviously turn out well when frozen, like iceberg lettuce. Sometimes milk has a weird flavor after you thaw it out. But there are lots of things that you can freeze, like vegetables, bread, butter, cheese will crumble so you need to grate it first flour you can store flour in your freezer and it will keep it fresh longer and i have linked a blog post below on things that i freeze and how i freeze them and some tips and tricks if you want a little bit more in depth on that because i do blanch and freeze a lot of vegetables i had a huge thing of potatoes it was not hard some of you are laughing at the way i just said potato aren't you potato potato. That just sound, I know that's how you say it, but it sounds weird. Anyway, I had a bunch of potatoes left over and I just peeled them, chopped them, blanched them, and froze them. It took 15 minutes from start to finish. It was really simple. And then I had a bunch of frozen potatoes in my freezer. And when I went to make something, I just plopped them in the slow cooker and Life is magical. I asked a follow-up question. Best way to wrap up and freeze foods. So you just need to make sure that you're not getting freezer burn. You might need to wrap things in parchment paper and aluminum foil or parchment paper and stick it in a freezer bag or just stick it in a freezer bag together. But you just want to make sure whatever you're using is freezer safe. So not all zip bags are created equal and not all plastic containers are created equal so you need to make sure that the ones that you're getting are freezer safe and then i freeze stuff in pyrex container this is a great question she says we don't have a walmart or aldi option how do you save on non-discount stores we don't have an aldi either in fact i got a lot of questions about my aldi favorites and aldi tips i don't know y'all we don't have an aldi we were told we were gonna get one two years ago. It never happened. Anyway, so I would get to know your sales flyer. Every grocery store puts out a sales flyer and you need to become familiar with it. So the first thing that you're going to want to shop is the loss leaders and those are usually things on the perimeter the cost section of the grocery store and the cost section is produce dairy meat and fresh bakery and so you're going to see at the front of the flyer and the back of the flyer what loss leaders are on sale and this is going to be your produce your meat your dairy etc shop those items when they are on sale and get the best discount also know what your store's sales cycle is. So if you track the sales cycle, you will see that every six to eight weeks, there are things that go on sale. Things like pasta sauce, yogurt, frozen food items, coffee creamer, a ton of things. And this is a time when you can stock up. So there is a wonderful website called southernsavers.com. I will link it below and she has a whole tutorial on how to know your loss leaders, how to know your sales cycle and how to save the most amount of money. She also does coupon pairings and I'll talk more about that in a second. So I got quite a few questions about 
coupons. Do I use coupons? Do I feel like it's worth the time? And I don't use coupons anymore. I used to be someone who clipped and printed and all of those things, but I found it not worth the time anymore. Coupons are just not what they were about eight years ago. And maybe we'll see a comeback when, you know, because the economy is not doing so great right now. I don't know. But it's just not worth the effort and the time anymore to me. That might change. My opinion is always subject to change as my life and the world changes. But as of right now, there are a few apps that I use like Dosh and Fetch, and that is how I save money on groceries. Dosh is very simple. I have it right here. And you link your debit or credit card to it, and you can get about 2% cash back on any grocery store purchases that you make. So you link your card, it looks for certain things after you swipe it at the grocery store, and then you get 2% back. And when I say certain things, I mean it looks for certain stores. There are stores that they have deals with and you can get cash back. The thing I love about Dosh is that I don't have to do anything. I use my debit card to go on about my life. I don't even have to think about it. And every once in a while I hear a little ding and they say, you have money in your Dosh account. And I'll have like money in my Dosh account. The second thing I use is Fetch. Oh my gosh, I love Fetch. It's Fetch. And in fact, I just used it. And I got a question on here that said, is Fetch even worth the trouble? There is no trouble. So the app, you take a picture of your receipt, you get points. The end. You can then trade those points in for gift cards. And I do a lot of my gift shopping that way. A lot of our Christmas was paid for using Fetch reward points. And you can get gift cards to Panera and Applebee's and hotels and Amazon and a ton of different places. So get yourself some Fetch. In fact, I have a link below if you want to sign up for that and you'll get $2 cash back. Also have a link if you want to check out Dosh. I don't think you get anything back. Do you plan separate meals for your kids? My toddler is picky and it's a struggle. No, I don't. When my oldest was a toddler, yeah, I did. But once the kids started piling up. When my oldest was a toddler, he was extraordinarily picky and now he will eat anything. I made Brussels sprouts earlier this week and I had to tell him to stop eating them off the pan before I could get them on the plate. So the key for me, and I can only speak for my own situation, is to just keep putting the food on his plate. So I would just put little tiny bites and I would say, I just want you to try one taste, just a taste. And if he didn't like it, he didn't have to eat all of it, but just a taste. And I read somewhere that it takes putting something in front of a kid 10 times before they really develop a palate for it. Also, I make sure that I always have something on the plate that I know they like and they are going to eat. But my philosophy has become, this is what I made you. This is what we're having. I know there's something in here that you like, but no one gets a separate meal. And it has really helped turn around some of that picky eating because there was a time when all my oldest son would eat was peanut butter sandwiches and yogurt. And now he eats literally everything. And my second oldest son actually asked me recently if I would buy him sushi at the grocery store. But he ended up liking it and it had all sorts of stuff in there that I never thought he would eat and he absolutely loved it. So just keep trying. And this kind of brings me to another question. I feel like my kids are so wasteful. How do you reduce food waste with children? And the key to that is put less on their plates. So we don't just want to give our kids what they like. We want them to have a variety, a variety of foods, right? But if we're loading up their plate with a ton of stuff that we know they're not going to eat, and then there's so much left over, really the only person that I have to blame in that situation is me. So if we end up at the end of a meal having a ton of food left in their bowl, um, it's probably nine times out of 10 because I put too much food in their bowl. And no, my kids don't go to bed hungry. That's never been an issue. And then I would rather give them less on their plate initially and have them ask for more 
than to put a bunch on there and it get wasted. So if you are struggling to feed a child, I really recommend that you check out Kids Eat in All Color. She is a registered dietitian. She has worked with the SNAP program. She really knows how to help a mama who is struggling to feed her kid. And most of the tips you hear me talk about are things that I learned from her. Do you do meatless dinners to save money on groceries? If so, how often? We actually go meatless a lot. So we do have meatless Monday. Um, we don't eat meat Sunday nights usually. We'll just make like pancakes and scrambled eggs. Although, do you consider eggs a meat? Uh, we do go meatless about two nights a week and then we don't eat me meat with every meal. It's usually just dinner. <laughs> Next question about meat. Do you buy bulk meat and divide up sales or discount stores? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I kind of have fallen into this just buying what I need and not having a huge stockpile right now. It, there's no reason for that. It's just a pattern I've fallen into. And so I know what are good prices and what aren't. And I just kind of plan my meals around that. Uh, we did used to use Zacon and then they suddenly went out of business. Remember that? That was fun going and getting our money back from them. Now, if I do buy in bulk, I buy at Sam's and I actually have a bulk meat discount. So if you order certain things in 40 pound increments, they will give you a deal, but I have not done that. I'll just buy like a big flatted chicken or sometimes I'll do pork loin and cut it up. Um, sometimes I buy chicken thighs and my husband grills them and then we eat multiple meals out of those chicken thighs throughout the week. Um, but it's just not something I've really focused on lately. I think if you eat a lot of meat, it can be a money saving tactic. But right now we're just in a season where we're not. Okay. How do you reduce food waste? So I touched on this a little bit when it comes to picky eating with kids, but as for how we handle food waste as a whole, as a family, this is actually something that we've had to be very intentional about because I realized we were throwing a lot of way away and we were wasting a lot. And my friend Angela at Debt Kicking Mom, she has a ton of videos and even made a cookbook all about this. But one of the things is planning multiple meals around the same items. So there's a few things that I do. One is that I automatically schedule in a leftovers night. It's Wednesday, so whatever is left over from Monday and Tuesday, we eat Wednesday for dinner, and that's it. Our, our leftovers are used up. But another thing is if I buy a bag of chicken thighs, because that's like the most economical, other than a whole chicken, a bag of chicken thighs is the most economical like cut of meat. I will make sure that I either freeze what we haven't used or also figure out creative ways to use those leftovers. So, and I talk about this all the time, but if I make a recipe I love called Change Your Life Chicken, it's a sheet pan of vegetables with chicken thighs on top, Later, we'll take the chicken off the bone and I'll make a completely different meal out of it. So it might be chicken quesadillas, it may be some sort of chicken and rice or pot pie, but I'm making sure that I am using up things and it's not necessarily like we had it on Monday, we're having it on Tuesday, no. It's mixing things up, but it's just being intentional. And I realize that we're busy, a lot of us are working, a lot of you are working outside the home and you don't necessarily have time to think about these things, but I promise you, if you take 15 minutes to intentionally meal plan and think about your week, it will actually save you time in the long run. How do you tide over between weeks with few coupons and sales? So the thing is, I have a set grocery amount that's got to get us through whether there's a sale or not. And so it's $125 a week, which is plenty for a family of six, particularly where we live. I think if you lived in California, that would obviously be harder, but that's plenty to get us through a week. Sometimes I will break it up, and so I'll buy groceries Sunday afternoon, and then I might go back again on Thursday to fill in some gaps. So I make sure that I reserve a few dollars to go in and buy produce and maybe some milk and coffee creamer so that we're not out. I hide myself over because I plan based on that week. So that brings me to the next question, which is do you shop weekly or monthly? It is always weekly because my life changes. So while I'm sitting here filming this right now, my husband's out of town. So he, we were gone all weekend and then he left Sunday and he'll come home tonight. And so sometimes I know that he's going to be out of town and sometimes I find out that morning that he's leaving. And so I 
my life changes very quickly and my meal plans might change very quickly. And so I think planning for an entire month would just be wasted in our home. So I plan a week. Sometimes I plan three days and then I go back on Wednesday and Thursday and buy more groceries out of that weekly budget. Planning beyond seven days is not very fruitful in my experience when it comes to groceries. However, we all have to find our own groove, right? Do you go to more than one grocery store to get the best deals? No, I go to one store and that's it. Right now I just do Walmart grocery pickup and that's it. Once a month I'll go to Sam's, that's it. Like I just, it's not worth it to me in this season of life to drag my children to multiple grocery stores. This is a great question. My family are super snackers. The healthy options all get expensive suggestions. Yes, put your family on a schedule. This is what I did. Because if left to their own devices, my children would snack all of the time. And then mealtime rolled around and they weren't hungry. So now they're on a schedule. They know what time we eat breakfast. They know what time they get a snack. Then lunch. Then afternoon time. And then snack. And then dinner. They know what time those meals are coming. Think about it like your kids are at school. They know that they eat breakfast before they go. They get snack or whatever at a certain time. They get lunch at a certain time. They probably get a snack in the afternoon. And so they are on that schedule. It's the same way. These are the snacks I buy. This is what you get. Because snacks serve a purpose, but if we're eating too many of them, they've moved beyond that purpose. Something you don't mind spending money on besides coffee produce. My kids eat the crap out of some produce and it's it's worth it. Thoughts on convenience versus saving full-time schedule outside of the home. Okay so my philosophy is whatever keeps us out of the drive through So sometimes having convenience meals like maybe it's a meal delivery where you get the recipe delivered to your house and then you cook it. Uh, I realize that those can get expensive, but I found that our, for our family, it's still cheaper than a drive through Also having some things that you pull from the freezer section that are convenience items that you can cook at home. What do I say all the time? Buying a rotisserie chicken and a bag salad and some pre-cut watermelon means it saves you from the drive through and saves you money and saves your sanity, then do it. Sometimes buying a few convenience items will save you in the long run because you're not heading to the drive through eating a bunch of stuff that makes you feel bad, not having any leftovers for another meal when you can focus maybe on a few convenience foods. It's There's no wrong answer here. How to stay in budget when you run out of everything at once. Okay, so I'm going to be honest with you. Running out of everything at once is a sign usually of poor planning. And I say this from experience because this has happened to me. I under plan. And so having a few emergency meals in my freezer helps. And by that, I mean, I will get frozen meatballs, which I realize some of you think are gross, but it's okay. A can of pasta sauce that I keep in the pantry. I can make subs out of it. I can make spaghetti and meatballs out of it. There's a lot of things that I can do. And so having like one emergency meal or maybe two really helps in that regard, but just basic like planning. And sometimes we forget to plan for breakfast or for snacks, but just having a simple rough outline will prevent you from running out of everything. Five staples that you use in many ways. Okay, brown rice or white rice, whatever you like to eat, because it really stretches out a meal. Also quinoa, I know that it's kind of expensive, but a little bit goes a long way. And so you can like bulk up your meal that way. Beans, you can add beans to things that adds protein and lots of good nutrients. And then you're also expanding a meal. I put some black beans in some taco meat the other day and like basically doubled the batch of taco meat. Um, mushrooms. Now, I know that maybe you don't like mushrooms, and I'm sorry, but I will put them in meatloaf. So I'll do mushrooms and bell pepper and onions and then like half a pound of meat, and it makes a huge meatloaf. Broccoli is a good one. You can just roast it if you have no other vegetables, but it also 
any vegetables that you can roast, so broccoli, carrots, sweet potatoes, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower. Cauliflower, I think, would be number five. Cauliflower is so versatile. Who knew? I was making Indian butter chicken, and I put the cauliflower in it, and like you could hardly taste that it was there. It just took on all of the flavors. And so it's a great way to get some vegetables into your kids. Um, it's relatively inexpensive. It freezes amazingly well. And so you can even roast it when it's been frozen and it really, it'll take whatever you throw at it. Is it worth it to stock up on basics, pasta, canned sauces, potatoes, onions, etc.? The potatoes and the onions only stock up if you're going to use them before they spoil. Um, but pasta sauce, canned sauces, canned vegetables, beans, canned fruit in water are its own juice. Absolutely. If you're sick or your husband, if you're sick or your significant other sick or you have a sick kid and you can throw together a few things out of some cans that you have in your pantry, do it. I do a meatless chili every once in a while and it's really good and it's basically just a bunch of cans that I threw into the slow cooker. Okay, that's it. That's all I got. I got to edit this down because right now I have an hour of footage and nobody wants to watch me talk about groceries for an hour. Anyway, thank you for your questions. Thank you for hanging out with me. I, f I feel like groceries can become such a touchy subject and I don't know why. Let's just feed our families, do the best we can to feed them as healthy as we can and let one another just be. I love you all. Thank you for being here. Be kind to each other. As Mama Dr. Jones says, be kind to each other. Be kind to yourselves. Be kind to me. And I'll see you in the comment section.